What if I told you not all micro reptiles had to be geckos? For this list, I'm gonna keep it as diverse as I can. So I'm not gonna do all one type of thing or all this type of thing. I wanna make sure that it's diverse and fun. We're gonna try to keep the size under six inches. That's where our guideline is going to be. And uh, just because it's a small reptile doesn't mean it's a small enclosure. We can do that as a different video if you want. Hit thumbs up if you wanna see that. But otherwise, let's just start off. Number five, musk turtles. Yeah, we talked about them earlier in the week. I know, but I wanna go over them again because I know when people see this list, they think it's gonna be just these tiny little boring creatures and musk turtles are something you don't usually see on small reptile lists, although they are small reptiles. Turtles in general usually get larger than a micro reptile, in my opinion, what I would call a micro reptile, but musk turtles are gonna top out around four or four and a half inches. Some of them as small as three inches. So it seems like this is actually the perfect reptile to put on this list to add some diversity, complexity, and keep it a little bit more unique. And the reason I think they're amazing reptiles is because they're so freaking cute. Yes, musk turtles, do get their name stink pot from being stinky, secreting tight like this type of musk basically. So it's something to keep in consideration for sure, but the water parameters aren't that difficult. It's not a huge aquarium. The temperature doesn't have to be crazy. Musk turtles are found basically everywhere. So they're super easy to find and they're not super expensive. You will definitely need a UVB light, but besides that, I mean, the cost isn't that crazy. Once you have the setup all together, feeding these guys is really simple. They don't eat a ton because they are so small and the upkeep is rather cheap. I'll keep the entry about these super cute turtles kind of short. There's a video right here all about the top five best turtles if you want to watch that. Otherwise, let's move on. Number four. White's tree frogs. Yeah, it wouldn't be a WWR list if we didn't include at least one amphibian, so we'll keep it at one amphibian. Dumpy's tree frogs, they're often called. I don't know if it's because they look kind of dumpy and derpy, but they do. These guys look hilarious to me. Are you coming at me? They are absolutely beautiful. They range in like color depending on many things, not just where they're from, but also they could just change within the same frog. You can see here that this is Muck, by the way. I named him Muck. This is my uh, dumpy tree frog. This is the first time we're showing Muck on the channel. Welcome, Muck. Put it in the comment section, say hello to Muck. Muck most of the time is like a blue green, but here it's almost like a purpley brown. So I think that's something that's very cool about these tree frogs is they do kind of change. And although these aren't the smallest tree frogs, I could have easily gone with American green tree frogs. I've got a couple of those as well. But I think that dumpy tree frogs, they're a little bit more unique and interesting. They do still top out around four, four and a half inches, so they're not big and they fit into the category nicely, but they are a little bit more unique. You see green tree frogs a lot more common, American green tree frogs, I should say. I think that dumpies, they're definitely getting more popular because look how cute they are and they're easy to feed, insectivores, very fun to watch, feed as well, eating things, crickets, mealworms, dubia, stuff like that. You guys know black soldier fly larva is something that I've started feeding feeding my tree frog and you can get those at the link. There's a link below code WWR at checkout. My friends at Grub Terra will ship right to your door. Amazing prices. I think that these are going to rise in popularity. Dumpy tree frogs for sure. And for my Australian viewers, you guys can actually have these. I talk so much about reptiles that you guys can't have because if you don't know in Australia, you can only keep native species. The nice thing is white tree frogs are from Australia. They're from areas around Australia too, but you can find them in Australia. So therefore you can keep them as a pet in Australia. If you want to keep your Dumpy's tree frog alone, you definitely can. You could do that in something like an Exoterra small, something that is 12 by 12 by 18. That's what I keep mine in. Or you could keep a trio of them if you wanted, get a bigger enclosure, of course. And they do really well in planted bioactive enclosures like I have set mine up in. Well, actually I didn't. I got the frog and the enclosure together. So somebody else set it up, but it looks absolutely fantastic. Muck will be getting an upgrade eventually with a full background and everything like that. But for now, I think that this is kind of a perfect setup. Arboreal, of course, because they are a semi-arboreal tree frog. Heat is easy, humidity is easy. They don't need UVB, unlike most of them on the list that we're gonna talk about. 
But what's really cool is they can actually tolerate handling as much as you could handle a frog. Most amphibians you shouldn't handle at all. They have a very porous skin. They can kind of take in oils and things like that from your skin. So make sure you have clean hands if you decide to handle your white's tree frog, but they'll handle handling much better than most frogs. They will sometimes try to chomp on you, but it doesn't really hurt. And also they will be jumpy maybe, but they'll tolerate it a lot better than say an American green tree frog or something like that. Hey Diamond. Okay, back to true reptiles. Number three, green anoles. Green anoles, brown anoles, same sort of care. They both fit on the list, but greens I just think are a little bit more beautiful and you're gonna be watching them, not handling them. In fact, a lot of people never handle their green anole at all. They're very fast, they are small. These guys kind of, uh, they can get higher than that six foot parameter I put on this list, which is arbitrary, but regardless, females will sort of top out around five inches, so that's perfect. Males can get six to eight, but can stay about five as well. And males do have that cute little dewlap, which I think is really cool. And like the tree frogs we talked about earlier, they do really well in planted vivariums. If you wanted to keep these guys in a kind of communal type of setup with other species, you can, including the next entry, which we're gonna talk about, which is a reptile. He's biting my neck instead of my ear this time. Maybe not with a dumpy tree frog, you probably want an American green tree frog or something smaller that will never try to eat. And a knoll, small anoles, yeah, the dumpy tree frogs might try to eat them. They will eat anything that fits in their mouth, the white tree frogs. Or you could keep them by themselves, or you could keep your green anoles with other green anoles. Of course, be careful, males will fight, so just the same sort of thing with many types of lizards. Uh, keep a bunch of females together with one male, you should be okay. Do your research on cohabbing first. This isn't a free-for-all. The bald guy behind the camera said you can go have them, so I'm gonna throw a bunch together. There's much more involved. There is a cohab video right here if you want more information. The heat and humidity parameters with these guys is relatively simple. I mean, if you live in a desert, it might be difficult, but not super difficult. They do need UVB light. They do need a kind of taller terrarium. They are going to be in the trees more than anything else. Thanks to Jersey Herper for sending me these really cool images of his anole in the trees. Actually laying on the same type of plant that this is right here. What type of plant is this, do you know? Put it in the comment section below. I know what it is, I, I sold plants for a living for a long time. We'll do a plant video soon, I know you guys are asking for it, but for anoles, I mean, to round it out, if you want something beautiful to look at, that's gonna be fast, fun to watch to eat, not super difficult, and is small, which is the point of the list, but you don't mind not handling it, green anoles are awesome. Number two, another one you could actually cohabitate with green anoles if you wanted, Long tail lizards or grass tail lizards or Asian grass tail lizards or long tail Asian grass tail lizard. There's a bunch of different names. It's a grass tail lizard. They are from Asia, so, and they have long tails. Anyway, these guys don't actually fit in the micro category at all if you include that tail, so we won't. If you go without the tail, snout to vent, you're talking about five inches. Four and a half, five, five and a half inches, something like that. That tail though, which is their namesake, they, uh, they have like a three times longer than their body. Their tail is ridiculously long, insanely long, which is really cool to look at in a terrarium because you know you have a small little lizard, but then you have like a much more to look at, especially its tail moving around, acting as a counterbalance when it's kind of surfing on top of the bushes or vines or, or trees or whatever you put in the enclosure which is what it's used for. It's a counterbalance, by the way. Not the same way a cheetah would use their tail as a counterbalance, but similar, you get the point. These guys have very similar care requirements to anoles, which is why when you see cohabitating type of setups where they're communal, you're gonna find these guys oftentimes together. Usually like the staples are green tree frogs or red eye tree frogs, um, or you know something like a house gecko along with green anoles and grass lizards or one or the other. They just work really well together. I'm not gonna go too much into it. It's very similar, easy to feed, uh, easy care requirements, humidity and lighting, insectivores as you know the anoles are. And of course they do need UVB as well and can't really handle them, they're fast. Same thing as an Oles, but they look different and they're from a different part of the world and they're not really the same, but I mean, if you, if you break it down, they kind of are. And number one micro reptile on this list, coolest that you can own, cave geckos. Okay, so we're including a gecko. Yeah, and we have talked about cave geckos before, full care guide, 
right here. And they don't really fit into the micro category because although sometimes they stay six inches, most of the time they get up to around eight. But these guys are so underappreciated, everybody loves them who works with them or who sees them. They kind of look like if a leopard gecko was in a My Chemical Romance cover band, that's what these guys look like. You know, Dear Diary, Mood Apathetic. I can't get through a Hawthorne Heights album without sobbing. These, that's what these guys look like. They look like kind of a, a, a goth version, emo version of a leopard gecko. I feel like I'm offending them. I hope they're not offended. They do live in caves, so they kind of have like I don't know, they live in the dark most of the time. They, I mean, don't keep them in the dark, give them a, a day and night cycle. Again, care guide I pointed to earlier. These guys are just very different in terms of their look, appearance. They are a lot cooler of a species, which I think a lot of people like, especially if you live in a place like I do, Canada, where it looks like this for half the year. These guys are perfect because they don't need crazy heat. They do need humidity though. So cooler temperatures, but higher humidity. That's actually not that common for reptiles. So I think that's really cool. And although they're considered terrestrial, uh, they have really strong feet. And my guess is they use these to kind of climb faces, not maybe not very high, but climb rocks and faces of cliffs and the inside of caves and things like that. Is there any research to support this? No, but it makes sense. If you're trying to traverse a cave, there's you know rocks and it's not just like a flat floor, right? So if you gave these guys some climbing obstacles and enrichment that way, I think it'd be really cool and fun to watch. I have. We'll go over the build that I did for my uh, cave geckos in a little bit, but these guys are fun to watch for sure. They can hang like bats, basically. These are the Batman of reptiles. Again, they're insectivores. These guys don't do really well on mealworms. They're just so cool of a species that they can't digest them really well. And uh, I mean, otherwise, very similar in terms of geckos, how as far as terrestrial geckos go. You can kind of treat them very similarly when you handle them to a leopard gecko or African fat tail. Although they're a little bit smaller, they are handleable, which is awesome. And that's why they're number one on the list. Because in my opinion, not everybody thinks this, and I don't think you're wrong if you don't. But in my opinion, to me, what makes a reptile a really good reptile is their handleability. And just for me, if I can't handle a reptile, I'm much more unlikely to actually get it. So there you go. Top five micro reptiles, what do you think? Do you agree with the list? Is there something that I missed? I know that you guys want decays brown snakes, they're just not great pets. So that's the other thing that with this list is, everything is a good pet, easy to care for. I know that in the comments section already, decays brown snakes, why is there no? It's just because they don't do really well in captivity a lot of the time. Yes, I know Snake Discovery has them, they're an expert, you might not be. Anyway, I feel like, why am I defending myself? Like, no one even wrote a comment yet. The video doesn't even go up for a few days. But if you wanna see videos early, you can be part of the Patreon subscribership, membership. If you wanna be a patron, you can do that for as little as $1 a month. You get to see videos like this extra early. You get to know about animals in my collection, like Mock, who was on Patreon months ago that I don't show on the channel for a little while. Eh, you get discounts on the merch. I post pictures of stuff that I don't post pictures of anywhere else. Um, stuff, yeah, you get the point. I really appreciate it, little as a dollar a month. And I think I plugged absolutely everything. Breeding season's coming up. That should be exciting. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And that means I'll see you on Thursday. No, Monday. I was, I almost turned the, Monday, see you on Monday.